All right, so returning and looking at a few more examples. Drawing a quick sketch of this quadratic. The vertex occurs in the third quadrant somewhere over here. Just drawing a rough sketch. You can type it in your calculator and kind of see the general shape and where it's located. Let's produce a slope graph. Again, here's an equation. We've been given an equation. Easy enough. Power rule. Find the derivative. We know it's going to be 4x plus 1. Okay, we know how to graph that. Uh, but what if we didn't have the equation? Well, line up vertically underneath your axes for your function, another axis um, where we're going to uh, plot uh, y values that uh, are the slopes of the graph of the regular function. So, okay, looking at the function, uh, find some pretty interesting places. Let's look at min's, max's, where the rate of change is zero, flat spots two. We'll be talking about flat, flat spots later. Okay, right here we see at this x value we have a rate of change of zero. So, lining up vertically with the slope graph, the slope axis, I'm going to say right here at this x value I have an x-intercept. Okay, The slope of the tangent line is zero, it plots as an x-intercept here. Once that's out of the way, again, work your way across the graph. Notice that the graph is decreasing into a minimum. The graph is falling into a minimum. All the rates of change here are going to be negative. Okay, So as we progress across the graph from left to right until we get to this x-intercept or this zero rate of change. Okay, right here, the slopes of the lines are um, getting closer and closer to zero from a negative direction. Now, the graph is pretty steep here in a negative way. Um, you know, still decreasing here, but this slope value is getting closer to zero. Um, and then right here too. So if we kind of line up right here at this x value, I'm going to plot a y value um, that's maybe say negative 12. Well, as I work my way across here and I look up at the corresponding regular graph, uh, this graph is uh, decreasing still, so its rate of change is negative, but not quite as negative, I guess you could say, um, as the previous uh, value. So my graph is actually coming up into these y values, okay, represent the slopes at corresponding x's here, and these y values are coming into um, this x-intercept. So I can kind of connect them this way. Now, I do know it's a straight line as opposed to a curve, so to speak, because this is quadratic, and if this is quadratic, its derivative is going to be linear. So that kind of helps me know to, to graph it um, as a straight line. Okay, so now as I work my way um, to the right of this zero slope, the graph is increasing, all the rates of change are positive, so these y values are moving away from zero. They're positive above the x-axis. Um, and the further up I go, this graph's going to get more and more steep. Uh, so these y values will plot um, higher than the previous y values as uh, you get closer and closer back to the zero slope. So I'm just going to kind of fill in a few points here. Continue connecting. I'm going to say, you know what? I think that's the derivative graph. That's the f prime graph. And if you kind of look at it, it, looked like, it looks like it might be um, the equation of, say, using the power rule up here, 4x plus 1. So again, remember, this is a sketching, sketching activity, uh, and that's what we have. Okay. All right, well, we're going to continue with an example where we are given a function, a graph of a function that is, but no equation. So we don't know what this is. So as best I can, I'm going to draw the graph of a uh, cube, a cube graph. And I'm going to have its maximum occur in quadrant 2 and its minimum occur in quadrant 1, something like this. So we've got a maximum in quadrant 2 and a minimum in quadrant 1. Okay, our goal, our objective is to sketch an f' prime graph. Well, if I don't have an equation for the function, I'm certainly not going to have an equation uh, for f prime. So vertically lining up another coordinate plane. As mentioned earlier, here's our strategy. Find peaks and valleys. Find highs and lows. Find where the rate of change is zero. Because I know that where the rate of change is zero, I can plot those as x-intercepts on the corresponding x's on the f prime graph. 
Okay, so right here, the rate of change is zero. I'm thinking, all right, about right here at this x, I'm going to have a zero slope. Another zero slope gets plotted as an x-intercept here. So whatever the f prime graph's doing, um, it cuts to the x-axis at these two x-intercepts. As mentioned earlier, I'm just going to tackle this graph by working my way from left to right. Okay, so as a graph is going into its maximum right here, it's rising. All the rates of change are positive. So these y values of these slopes will all be positive numbers. So my graph, my derivative graph, should be before the x-intercept down here, should be above the x-axis. All right, well, the further down we are on the graph, the more steep the tangent line, the greater the value of the slope. So that plots is a pretty high y value down here. Okay, we're just moving our way around the graph. Still a positive slope, okay? But this value isn't as great as the one that was previous to it. So these y values right here are falling. They're decreasing. Okay, look at this slope value. Still positive, but less in value, closer to zero than the previous ones. And eventually I'm going to get to the zero slope. Okay, how should I connect these into my x-intercept? Well, straight, curved. If this is cubic, we know the derivative of a cubic is going to be a quadratic. And we know the quadratic isn't linear, so I'm probably going to try and give it some kind of shape that's not straight. So we're building the f prime, prime graph slowly by looking at regions of the regular graph. Next, I'm going to tackle from the um, two rates of change of zeros. So from the max to the min, the graph's always falling. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to fall from a max to a min. All these slope values are going to be negative. They're all negative. Well, what happens is they, they're negative and they move away from zero in a negative fashion. Okay, and they keep falling, they keep falling, but at some point, okay, those negative slope values are going to get closer and closer to zero again. So I'm leaving a zero slope, I'm moving away from a zero slope, but I'm getting closer back into a zero slope as I approach the x-intercept. So between these two x-intercepts, between these two zero slopes, all my y values are going to be, slope values, are going to be negative. So these y values down here will be negative. I leave zero as a y value, but at some point I've got to come back to zero. Okay, that's that region. Okay, now let's tackle the region from the minimum over. Well, the graph is increasing again. All the slopes are, are going to be positive. Um, as I move away from zero, I don't have a very steep tangent line, but certainly the higher up I go on my graph, um, the more steep the tangent line, the greater the y value for my f prime graph. So as I finish graphing it and sketching it, it does appear to be quadratic, which is what I thought when I was working with a cubic graph. Okay, let's look at the challenges of this graph and sketching its derivative graph. Okay, so I don't know what this graph is. Um, I can guess. To me, it appears to be 1 over x. I'm just thinking in the back of my mind, this looks like the reciprocal graph, even though I wasn't told it's the reciprocal graph. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and just uh, attempt to sketch the derivative graph without knowing what the equation is based on my new strategy. Okay, well, look at this graph. It has no mins and maxes. It has no flat spots. The rate of change will never be zero. So what's important to notice? Well, you know, there's no part of the graph at x equals zero, so there should be no y value down here on the slope graph. I, don't, I can't have a tangent line where this graph is not continuous. So I guess we just need to work our way from left to right. All right, so let's study this part of the graph and the slopes of the tangent lines. The further out you go this way, the more flat the tangent line. It's close to a zero value. Well, what's important to notice then is, is that tangent slope a positive or a negative number? Well, the graph is decreasing, so this slope value and every other slope value on this part of the graph is going to be negative. But it's negative close to zero. So I'm going to plot that y value somewhere down here that's negative underneath the x-axis close to zero.
And I know if I were to work my way to the left, it's going to get, I guess, a less, I guess you could say it's less steep in a negative way. So the slope value will be closer, closer to zero, but still negative. Okay, so I have an idea of how the graph's going to come on the screen for f prime. Okay, as I travel now from this x coordinate back to the right, I see that the slopes are getting more steep in a negative way. Okay, so looking at those corresponding x's, the slopes are more steep, or the, the lines are more steep, so the slope is going to be um, even a greater negative number, I guess you could say. And the further out you go on the graph down this way, boy, those tangent lines are pretty steep, uh, and the value for them will be um, a large negative number. So I guess my graph is doing something like this. Okay. But I'm never going to hit the negative y-axis. So my slopes are almost getting vertical in a negative kind of fashion. Okay, and I'm going to put an arrow here. Okay, so let's work our way over here on this part of the graph. I've noticed this part of the graph is from left to right also decreasing. So every slope value will be negative. So I know the y values will plot some da somewhere down here in quadrant four. Okay, starting from way up here. Okay, that's a pretty steep tangent line. So let's look at what kind of negative number that is. That's going to be perhaps way down here. Okay, let's say we're traveling along the graph and now we've moved over here to this x coordinate. Well, it's still negative. Um, it's not as steep, so that y value is going to be getting closer and closer to zero, so it's coming up in this fashion. Okay, and eventually the graph is kind of leveling off to where all these y values are negative, okay, or excuse me, these slope values are negative, um, and they plot as um, y values down here that are negative closer to zero. So maybe you kind of have the idea now. Okay, what's going on here? So like this. So will this slope ever be zero? No, it'll still be a negative value, but close to zero. So the positive x-axis becomes um, a horizontal asymptote for this graph. So that's the slope graph. If you wanted to check it because you're thinking, you know what? I think this is the reciprocal graph, 1 over x. Rewrite it. Think about applying the um, power rule and you're going to get negative 1x to the negative 2, and that could be rewritten as negative 1 over x squared. And think about our previous work with 1 over x squared. Well, positive 1 over x squared comes together near the positive y-axis, so a negative 1 over x squared would just be a reflection of that. So everything seems to be in order um, graphically and numerically. And uh, if we have time, we're going to look at one more. We have a couple minutes. Okay, returning to something we're familiar with, let's look at the absolute value graph. Now we haven't worked with figuring out how to find the derivative of the absolute value graph. It would have you rewrite it as a piecewise function, but we're not going to look at that. We, we're going to just look at um, the basic shape of the absolute value graph and curve sketch f prime and then kind of connect to something we've learned over the years. All right, so f prime of x. I'm going to leave this blank, but you're going to be able to fill that in in a moment based on your previous work. Okay, um, thinking about what we've learned this year, um, some interesting places here on this graph would be at x equals 0. So we know that at x equals 0, this graph is not differentiable. Um, we see we have a sharp corner, the slope from the left, and the slope from the right will not match up, so we say this graph is not differentiable. So down here on the corresponding f prime graph at x equals 0, I will not have a y coordinate because this graph is not differentiable. I have no slope here, so there's no y value that I can plot. So just know that that's going to be open along the y-axis. Okay, well let's study this part of the graph then. It's decreasing, the slopes are always negative, it's also linear, so that means that we have a constant rate of change. What would be the slope value at any, each and every one of these x's? And if you just think of the parent function, the absolute value of x, um, that's a, um, a drop of 1 and a run of 1. 
So the slope here on this piece is just going to be, if you think about it, uh, negative 1. So all these slope values are negative 1 values. So coming down here, if I said this is negative 1, I'll plot that y value because that's the slope at that x. Okay, This y value is negative 1, that's the slope at that x. So I'm actually just drawing in this horizontal line right here. But remember, as we back it back up to the y-axis, I'm going to put an open circle as like a little bumper here because I won't have a y value there. Okay, let's come up to the graph and curve sketch here on the right. Well, the slopes here at any of these x values are positive 1. So all those slope values get plotted as 1 down here. Connecting. Okay, maybe putting an open circle here and connecting. That's the slope graph for the absolute value graph. And you may, may recognize this graph because we've done some work with it in a previous class. And I think that's kind of neat to make a connection between absolute value and this, uh, this graph right here. And, and why did we study it last year? Well, it has a lot of good implications for um, limits, uh, continuity, and then now also derivatives. See if you remember this parent function last year as absolute value of x over x. So the derivative of the absolute value of x is, in fact, this here and there function, as you might remember it. So curve sketching, hopefully that helps a little. Yes, you'll need some more practice, um, but we will certainly do that um, the next time we get together.